Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in while I teach my husband Roy how I make a perfect charcuterie board. I'm Starla Davis and my husband and I are the owners of Royal Roost Farm. We make artisanal seasoning blends and all natural family care products. And our seasoning blends feature heirloom herbs that we grow ourselves. You can find us at the Dallas Farmers Market, the McKinney Farmers Market, Lucas Farmers Market, online at royalroostfarm.com and on Amazon at slash royalroostfarm. Now the first step to making a really outstanding charcuterie board is to know your audience. So especially if you're entertaining, you want to make sure that you're aware of any dietary concerns, food allergies, that you have options like crudités and fresh fruit or um, vegetables like cucumber slices for people who may be calorie conscious or eating low carb, have separate charcuterie boards for children or picky eaters, and make sure that you don't cross contaminate for any potential allergies. So, honey, do you have any dietary concerns I need to be aware of? No. Nope. <laughs> well, then let's get started. So first things first, we want to start with safety. Be mindful of food temperature. If your food's going to be out for more than two hours, plan to swap out perishable foods with fresh replacements. Clean and sanitize. Keep your workspace and utensils clean and free of contaminants. Practice the best personal hygiene. Be obsessive about hand washing. This is critical to avoid the transmission of foodborne illnesses. And even if you're wearing gloves, remember to change them frequently. Sharpen your knives. Not only does it make the prep work easier, but it also makes it safer too. And you can wine with an H now, but save the wine without an H for later. No testing the wine pairings until all the cutting and slicing is done. Most of all, you want to have fun. So start with a theme in mind. Choose to represent a specific country or region. Focus on a particular cuisine. Build a board based on food origins, such as farm to table. Go global with interesting choices from around the world. Or integrate an entree into your charcuterie board. Tacos, burgers, barbecue, kebabs, those are all great options. And then you choose accompaniments that'll go well with it. You can even make a kid-friendly snack board or build your theme around a particular sport, event, or movie theme. Okay, so let's get started. You want to start by selecting your cheeses. Variety is key. Look for different textures. They're semi-soft, soft, firm, hard, or crumbled. You can make sure that you variegate the colors. Orange, white, blue, yellow, marbled. You can even vary the rind color. You can select different sizes and shapes. Cheese comes in balls, logs, wheels, wedges, slices, cubes, shavings, curds, lots of possibilities. And you want to choose a variety of pungencies. You know, not everybody likes strong cheeses. Some people really do. So mix it up from mild to strong. And look for interesting additives like beer, wine, espresso, fruits, spices. So when you get started, you want to place your largest pieces of cheese first. So our largest today is this lovely bacon gouda. So we're going to put that right up here. Then we have a nice uh, citrus stilton. We're going to put that over in this corner. We have a lovely Asiago with rosemary and olive oil. That one broke on me, so we're going to come up with a creative solution for that. And then we have this beautiful port wine cheddar. And last but not least, we have some Havarti dill cubes. So we're going to sprinkle those too. Honey, which ones of those sounds the best to you? I like the uh, smoked. Yeah, that bacon gouda? Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm excited to try that one. Okay, so when you place your cheeses, uh, you want to make it easy for guests to get some of them. So like the Stilton is a crumbly cheese. So you want to go ahead and crumble off a few pieces so that it's easy for people to dive into. But you don't want to do too much because it makes storing it a little bit more complicated. Our Havarti dill is already cubed. So um, we'll work on this Asiago that broke on us next. We're just going to cut some small pieces. We're going to leave it on its side since it's a little bit more delicate. And people can cut this way. So... And don't be afraid to use some crumblage as decoration, too. Now we're back to the... Oh, no, more crumbles. Okay, unexpected decoration. There we go. We'll leave it just like that for now. Uh, this port wine, because it's so beautiful, I want to leave that one on its side as well. And we're just going to cut a few slices here. 
Go ahead and throw that rind away. So that's probably good enough to get us started with that one. And then last but not least, this yummy bacon gouda. We're going to leave up here on its side in a position of prominence, and we're just going to go ahead and cut off a few little pieces. Ooh, that rind's a little tough. Okay, maybe we're going to turn it sideways to cut it. The best thing to remember, though, is that there really are no rules. You know, you can mix and match cheeses however you want to, to whatever you think your guests are going to like or you're going to like. Um, you can have all the textures, or if you really just only like the firmer cheeses, then go with that. It's your board. Do what you want. All right, so that is it for our cheeses. So now it's time to bring on the meats. And again, variety is key. Fold soft meats like salami or sopracetta into halves or even quarters, or you can roll them into the shape of a cone. You can roll ribbon style cuts like prosciutto around a crispy breadstick. You can slice hard sticks of meat into rounds. And then you can also add in unusual things like smoked salmon, jerky, smoked meat sticks, and sausages. So for us today, we've got a lovely peppered hard salami. We're just going to put that over here. And I didn't slice up all of it because I don't think that we'll eat all of it tonight, but for convenience sake, you really could. Next, we're going to grab some pepperoni. And here's where you take a little extra time to uh, lay it out and fan it out so that it looks nice and pretty. Pepperoni is always a crowd pleaser, so it's a really safe bet for your charcuterie board. Oops. If it'll behave itself. And again, you don't want all of your meats uh, clustered up. You want to spread them out around your board. If you'll notice, I'm getting these, the second row to stay in place by tucking you just slightly under the row in front of it. All right, there we go. Okay, well these guys don't want to fold, so we're just going to fan them out in rounds. Sometimes we make the rules, sometimes the food does. Okay, and then last but not least, my secret ingredient here. This is candied bacon, and it is absolutely out of this world, so we are definitely going to make some room on the board for that. Next is probably my favorite part of making a charcuterie board, and that's picking all of the accents that are going to go along with it. So you can select accompaniments from these four categories. You can pick sweet things like honey, preserves, dried or fresh fruit, cookie butter, Nutella, and chutneys. You can go for savory add-ons like peppers, tapenades, hummus, baba ganoush, aiolis, olive oils and herbs, or crudités. Uh, you can round out with some salty things like nuts, crostini, and good crackers. Go for something acidic or brined like pickled foods, olives, or mustards. 
So we've got a nice little sermon here. We've got some really lovely marinated mushrooms that have our Tuscan table blend on them. We've got some olives. Those over there. We've got some spicy brown mustard. Put that here next to the salami. And then we're gonna get a little extra fancy over here with some fresh honeycomb. All right, doesn't that look delicious? So honey, so far, what are you most excited about? I'm kind of favoring that uh, pepper salami there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. As you're building your board, you really want to keep in mind the style of the board. You can use hollowed fruits or vegetables as bowls, place condiments in small items like olives in small matching bowls like we've done here, slice and slightly fan apples and pears, use small bunches of grapes or handfuls of berries to fill gaps, and add a stylized cheese centerpiece. We'll give you some recipes for those. But since we're running out of space on our board, we're just gonna add some dried fruits. Do that there. And then we've got an assortment of really yummy crackers. So let's see, looks like we've got some room here. These are little cheese twists, Parmesan flavored. They are out of this world. We've got these really cool cranberry crackers. And you really, like when you're picking your crackers, you want to use a mix of sweet and savory things. You don't want just a bunch of wheat crackers. Be creative. And we've got these really neat artisan flatbreads. They're um, everything flavored. So we're going to fan those out right there. And last but not least, we've got some jalapeno garlic pristines that I forgot to open, so apologies for the noise. All right, I'm just going to put a handful of those over here. Oops, over here. Uh-oh, cracker down! Okay, so this is our charcuterie board for dinner. So very exciting. Um, can't wait to hear what you guys say in the comments about what your favorite parts of the board are. Before we move on, I'm gonna show you one more fun charcuterie idea. So now let's talk about charcuterie for kids. So we have a four-year-old and he is a much pickier eater than either of us are. So we like to make him his own little board so that he can feel like part of the grown-up club, but also not put his fingers all over our food and then spit it out because he doesn't like it. So here's a fun mix of things that we like to do for him. So let's start with our peanut butter crackers. And then of course we always want him to eat all the fruits and veggies we can get him to. So. We're gonna give him some dried fruit because he thinks it's candy. We'll add in a few of these Havarti dill cubes just because they look fun to eat, so maybe he'll give them a try. He's just not a cheese person yet. We're not real sure how that happened. But he does love salami, so we'll give him a couple of salami rounds. You can get really creative and like arrange things in smiley faces or you know whatever but today we're just going to be quick and easy we'll give him some yogurt covered pretzels that he insists he doesn't like but yet he really does We've got some cut fruit for him here
It sounds like he's about to crash my presentation. All right. And you know what? I think I'm going to move these pretzels over here. And I'm going to get him just a little cup of yogurt to dip into there. For some reason, he finds yogurt so much more interesting if it's in a fancy bowl. So here we go, fancy bowl. There we go. All right, so now we have a lovely little snack plate for our, our little guy so he can feel like part of the party. Um, and again, you can do all sorts of things with a kid's charcuterie board. You can have fun themes, you can really mix it up, use seasonal candies, granola bar pieces, fruit leathers, marshmallows, trail mix, dry breakfast cereal makes a great addition. Little cookies like vanilla wafers, animal crackers, or teddy grams are always cute. Bite-sized crackers, yogurt-covered pretzels like we have here. And you can even make fruit and cheese skewers because kids love anything that you've stabbed on a stick. So. Um, <laughs> Be sure to remember your small guests for your parties and it'll help everybody have a much more pleasant time because little kids and big fancy charcuterie boards don't always mix. So remember, when you're planning for your big charcuterie board for your event or when you're entertaining, the rule of thumb is two ounces of meat and cheese per person if you're serving other hors d'oeuvres or an entree. If the charcuterie board is the entree, then you want five ounces of meat and cheese per person. Uh, combined, not separate, not 10 ounces per person. Five ounces combined per person. Now remember earlier I mentioned having a cheese centerpiece. And so we're going to talk about a few of those right now. One of my favorites that looks so impressive and takes literally seconds to put together is this goat cheese with figs and uh, pistachios and rosemary citrus sea salt. So rosemary citrus sea salt is one of our seasoning blends and it just really brightens up this very, very quick uh, but impressive dish. And it tastes amazing and it's even better the next day. So if your guests don't eat it all, you'll get to enjoy it later. Another of our go-to secret weapons for entertaining is this garlic pepper sage cheese ball. Garlic pepper sage is another one of our seasoning blends, and we combine that with eight ounces of mascarpone cheese that's been softened, four ounces of cream cheese that's been softened, a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I like Tillamook. I think it's got the best flavor uh, for a quick off-the-shelf kind of cheese, at least. And then we roll it in a half cup of toasted almonds. Um, and we use about three tablespoons of the garlic pepper sage seasoning in there. That makes it pretty strong, and the next day it's really strong. So if it's your first time to make it, you might want to scale back a little bit, especially if you don't know if everybody in your group loves garlic and sage. But give it a try. It's really delicious, and it looks super impressive. If you want even more recipes and inspiration, head over to our blog at royalroosfarm.com and click on the Learn section. We also post a lot of recipes on our Instagram, food photos, and little quick ideas. So that's at Royal Roost Farm. You can visit our website, shop us on Amazon, or visit us at the Dallas, McKinney, or Lucas Farmers Markets. So before we dive into this glorious cheese board, honey, tell me what you're most excited to try. Oh, it all looks great. Uh, this honey, I want to put some of this honey on some of these crackers and some of this cheese. That's going to be probably my favorite part, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm excited about that too. All right, well, we're gonna go eat and enjoy this lovely charcuterie board. I hope that you guys have picked up some inspiration or um, some ideas for your next entertaining event or even just sitting at home watching the Stars game like we're about to do. So go Stars and we'll see you around the roost. <laughs>